Welcome to the Sun River Anglers Fly Tying Corner, where each month we bring you a new fly pattern to give a try to on our Central Oregon lakes and rivers. In addition to showing you how to tie each pattern, I'll feature fishing technique tips and tricks, and I'll cover some of the entomology behind each pattern to help gain a better understanding of the bugs that we're trying to imitate. I have field tested each of the patterns that I feature each month to make sure that they catch fish. I'll cover tying instructions for the fly as well as materials to help you be able to recreate these patterns on your own vise. For this month's pattern, I'm going to tie a mahogany parachute. This is a fly that holds a special place in my heart. Upon moving to Central Oregon, I used this pattern up on Oregon's Fall River and I caught a really nice 17 inch rainbow um, not too long after starting fishing that very first day. And so I've always gone back to this pattern in the fall and this year will be no exception. So let's briefly review the materials for this pattern. As I tie this fly, I'll introduce each material in greater detail so you can see why I selected each. So let's get started on this pattern. For a hook, I'm going to use a fire hole 419 in a size 14 to 16. This is a competition barbless hook and one I like a lot for mayfly dry flies. For the thread, I'm using a Danville's flat wax thread in size 6 aught, and this is a tobacco brown. So I'm going to start by tying on my thread right at the two-thirds point of this hook. And that's where I'm going to place the wing. So I'll return my thread right to where the wing is uh, going to be tied in. And then I've taken a hank of my Zelon. For the wing, I'm going to use a dark dun Zelon. This is something I get from Blue Ribbon Flies in West Yellowstone, Montana, and it works really well for winging um, a parachute dry fly like this. And I'm going to tie three or four wraps over the top of it, trying to keep a very narrow band of thread on top of this material. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and post that upright. Um, I'll tie a number of wraps of thread around the Zelon and work up from the hook up the, the shaft of the Zelon to create a post on this um, pattern. For the tail, I'm using micro fibats, and these are a medium dun color. So I've selected out four micro fibats, and I've clipped them to length. I'm going to tie in, tie in this tail at about two to two and a half times the gape of the hook. And I'll tie them on right at the wing and I'll wind all the way back to the tail set, taking care to lift that material so the thread drives it down and flattens out each fiber onto the hook. This is important to make sure that tail will split correctly when we split it. So then I'll prop this material up with my thumb and I'm going to uh, manually split the tail and then I'll figure eight in between um, the two five bets on either side of the tail. And lastly, I'll finish with one wrap underneath and lock it in place to show you a very nice split tail. For the abdomen, I'm using a stretch floss. 
This material will stretch and lay down flat as you tie it onto the abdomen. It also helps uh, ride the fly very low in the water as this material um, really doesn't float that well. We've got to rely on the parachute and the tail to float the fly. So this helps um, the signature of a low floating just hatched out mayfly done. So I'll tie in my flex floss right at the back side of the wing and I'll wind this all the way back to the tail set position. Now I'm going to begin winding this flex floss by taking one wind underneath the tail and then I'll wind up the body trying to keep my wraps evenly spaced and uh, I put a little stretch on this floss to get it to flatten out and keep that body nice and neat and trim. For the thorax, I'm using a superfine dubbing in mahogany brown. So I'm going to dub a fine noodle onto the thread of this superfine mahogany brown dubbing. And I'll begin by wrapping several wraps behind the wing. And then I'm going to prepare my hackle and I'll tie the the hackle stem on right in front of the wing with the dubbing material. For a hackle, I'm using a whiting dry fly saddle, and this is grizzly dyed brown. So I'm going to start winding the hackle up toward the top of the post. And as I wind each subsequent wrap, I'm going to wind underneath the preceding. And what that does is basically pushes all of the barbs upward. And it keeps um, any or many of these barbs from getting caught up and getting pushed down where you don't want them to. And it makes for a very clean hackle. So I'll tie this hackle off and I'll clip off the excess and then I'll drop into a whip finish and if I'm not using any glue I might even add a second quick wick whip finish over the top of it to really make sure it's secure. So the last step in this pattern is to go ahead and cut that Zelon wing to size. I'm going to clip it at about one and a half times the gape of the hook or about the length of the shank of the hook. So this is a good time to do any cleanup that you need to any stray barbs or any any material slightly out of place um, so you have a nice tight clean looking finished pattern so now let me rotate the vise so you can see all sides of the mahogany dun parachute pattern so that has been your sun river anglers fly time corner for this month I hope you'll give the Mahogany Dunn Parachute a try. Mahogany season is coming up on the Crooked, in the Fall River, in the Lower the Chutes, and the Metolius. So be prepared. This is a good one for that particular hatch. If you like what you see, please subscribe to this YouTube page. 
and follow us on Facebook at Sun River Anglers. Thanks for watching.